Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and welcome to the continuing deep dive into the depths of Shadows of Brimstone. And in this episode, we are continuing the look at the expansions, and we're going to be taking a look at Caverns of Cinder. I believe this was the first of the expansions, the other world expansions, to hit retail. It was the first one I got at retail. Um, out of the box, this is easily my least favorite of the boxed expansions for this game. It just doesn't add a lot, and the world in this box is kind of boring, in my opinion. However, it is also cheaper than the other expansions. And also, they continue to develop this expansion by adding stuff to it in other expansions. And once you get everything, it actually ends up being pretty cool. Um, this is the only game I know of off the top of my head in which expansions are expanded by other expansions. So, yo dog, I heard you like expansions. Well, here's Shadows of Brimstone. Uh, let's take a look to see who this cover art is by. Let's see, box cover, Ralph Horsley. And illustrations in the game by Brian Snotty, Matthew Morgan, Ralph Horsley, Corey Hubble, Ben Wooten, and Brandon Gillum. So again, Flying Frog Productions just really nailing the art. So here we have the back of the box. Even the uh, picture of the stuff you get, like if you compare it to the uh, derelict ship which we looked at, it just it's not quite as jam packed so this says that a fiery dimension of lava and ash the burning caverns of cinder are home to many dark and ancient evils imprisoned within rivers of molten rock flow and pool into lakes of fire forging fiendish lava men to assault any who dare cross over into their world but there are also treasures to be found, gold and priceless artifacts pulled from across space and time to fill the vaults of cinder and the pockets of any traveler bold enough to seek them out. And you get your box contents down there. So pretty typical, typical Flying Frog Productions um, box. And now let's move into the adventure book and the rule book. So very familiar, you have your game contents over here. You will get an overview uh, of the new over, um, other world. A look at your tiles, new map tiles, some new cards. Only one new enemy in this uh, set. And that is the Magma Men, Magma. Um, there are six new missions. I believe this was the rule set that introduced burning markers and lava space markers and there is there is lava on the maps that can do damage to you and then you also have liquid dark stone and some hellfire markers now this expansion also introduced some modifier tokens and i actually have those in a box that i use for my campaign it was just a bunch of little tokens that have different numbers on there that you can use to add to your character sheet so you can remember certain modifiers. It can be helpful, especially if you're not playing with a character sheet, uh, a pen and pencil or pencil and paper character sheet. And then, like I said last time, we did look at those poker chip tokens for the experience. And then again, you also are going to get some additional counters that are not used in this set but might be used later, haha, -ha, never used later, <laughs> unless you uh, create some rules for um, your own campaigns and that kind of thing. Some of the tile overlays, which I wish they would use, are pretty cool looking. You have this kind of overhead um, view of this statue. Now I've made scenarios where you know you had to figure out a puzzle, or just, just a real easy puzzle, not really a puzzle, but you had to you know, make a stat check to figure out that your characters had to like turn the statues to face each other, that kind of thing. But it does add a nice little thematic element and those statues are actually present on some of the tiles. 
And then you have these here, these, uh, I don't know what these are, some kind of uh, like hellfire generators or magma machines, something like that. But you have a few of those that you can use for some custom missions. So while it is, it is a little, it's a double-edged sword, them handing out all of these extra cardboard tokens. Like they did the work, they put the art on, they made the nice cutout. Uh, some of them have text on them, some of them have numbers on them. So they obviously put some thought into what they were doing. And you do have to end up storing them, but you can also end up using them at a later time, which can be fun. And then you are going to get your world card for your rules in the Caverns of Cinder. There is intense heat. At the start of a hero's activation, they take one hit for every item of clothing they are currently equipped with. However, heroes are plus one max grit. So when you go into the Caverns of Cinder, you want to go in not wearing a lot of clothes or else your clothes might catch on fire. Uh, there are lava spaces and the lava spaces have some extra rules there. Some of the new map tiles include special lava spaces that can be dangerous for heroes to traverse. These spaces have a glowing yellow border and a dodge number in one corner, three plus a four plus. So when you land on a space with that or cross through it, you will have to uh, safely navigate that space by making, I believe it is an agility. Yes, it is an agility test or else you will get burned with the burning markers. Uh, Hellfire markers, you have a rickety bridge tile. This is a really cool looking tile. I like this tile a lot. Uh, one of the new mind map tiles is the rickety bridge. This map tile has two areas on it with no grid spaces. They are both considered to be pits. I don't believe you can, like, I don't think you have to make a test to cross the bridge. It's not like the bridges in Warhammer Quest where are, they are instant death but it probably is a nice nod to that game. And then just like in the Derelict Ship expansion, which came with two thematically alternate monsters, enemies to fight, they do include tokens here for Lava Bats and Souls of the Damned. And they also include the old character card, the enemy cards for those two enemies, just in case you don't have them. And those would be the regular Hellbats and the Hungry Dead, the zombies. And so you will be able to use those in this expansion if you don't have that. And then here we have our missions. We have Cracks in Reality. Uh, defend the Bridge. This is actually a pretty cool mission. I like this mission quite a bit. It's fun. It's different. It is, it's always nice when they introduce some new special rules for some of the missions. Uh, Dark Deal fire and ash hunt for the liquid dark stone and broken seals this is a really cool tower uh, tile i like that tile a lot especially this tile is especially fun when i use my advanced exploration house rules which we will go over at a later time i basically i use the stack of 12 exploration tokens kind of like the stack of dungeon cards in warhammer quest to introduce some elements of backtracking and splitting the paths in this game. And here we have some um, theme for our other world, the Caverns of Cinder. The Caverns of Cinder is a fiery dimension of lava and ash. It is filled with burning underground rivers of molten rock that flow and pool into lakes of fire. Massive alien temples are built into the walls devoted to dark and powerful gods and a name that is only hinted at in Whispers of Nightmares, Belial. So I don't believe that Belial was actually available when this was released. At least I got it probably like two years later. And that was a really nice addition to get this gentleman here, this massive boss, one of the big main bosses for the game. And he actually adds some cool stuff to this expansion. So if you do get this expansion, I highly recommend you also pick up the uh, Belial Extra Extra Large Enemy Expansion and the Hellfire Succubi um, Enemy Mission Pack, which also adds quite a bit to this expansion. And then you also get a little um, lore about the enemy, the Lava Men. 
Then, like I said, there's our two sheets there. And there is our, uh, depth our depth event for when you roll doubles holding back the darkness. So the tiles here, again, you will get a full complement of tiles, a full uh, dungeon for the Caverns of Cinder, and a mine map. Now this mine starts in the night. I've never really understood why they have some that start in night and day. Uh, I don't remember any special rules for that. Um, Especially doesn't make sense when you're going from night into just a regular. I don't know. I always just thought it was a little, it was a little odd. But I do like this cinder starting tile. I actually do like the art on the cinder tiles quite a bit. The red and blue really stand out. When I went to the first Flying Frog Productions Dice Fest up here um, in Redmond, they had a huge massive epic game of shadows of brimstone set up with like i think it was up to 16 players and it was in cinder and they had a huge map laid out and it looked it looked amazing and if you guys have never seen the frogs their 3d diorama maps that they make for their special uh events definitely look online and check those out because they are super super cool but this is a really awesome tile and it has these cages here with like people sticking their arms out, some alien tentacles. So these beings are definitely being held prison as prisoners in this hellish landscape. And I do like that quite a bit. There's those magma machines. There's really nice deep uh, colors on, on these boards. There is our bridge board. That's a really nice board. I really like the... Um, the lighting. They did a really good job of simulating that light. This really does look like an old Warhammer Quest tile. And there is some of our lava tiles there. I do like how they made the uh, the lava, how it's like cooling off. Very cool. Again, good lighting there. The more you look at these tiles for Shadows of Brimstone, uh, the more you realize just the, the amount of artistry that went into them, I think that some of the detail is, is really quite nice. So we'll just go look through these really quick. There's another statue. This is a cool, cool shape. There's some dangerous tiles there. Looks like some kind of spores, maybe some spider eggs. The lava there looks very neat. So let's take a look at our map cards now. So again, you will get a deck of map, of mine maps and of cinder maps. And you will have a few special encounters. Looks like you have a, like typically you do have four rooms that have no advanced encounter. And then you will also get your advanced encounters I always like it when cards have their own charts. It's a good use of space. A void layer, scorching hellfire, black blood of the earth, the rock slide, a dark rift, and acid drips. So lots of cool stuff to encounter there. And then you also have your cinder map. So you will have your passages you will have your four basic rooms, and then you will have your special rooms here. Echoes of Agony, Rusty Cages. Rows of rusty cages line the walls here, and the sounds of suffering echo through the halls. Choose. One hero can make a cunning six-plus check. Um, then, if you successfully set them free, you have a random hero has to make a luck five-plus check. Drilling machines, a lake of fire searing heat which one was searing heat on i think that was uh c5 oh yeah look at that that's a blazing pool of magma there venting steam and stone sentry all right so those are our two map decks some of the artifacts in the uh, cinder world are pretty cool You've got this uh, statue of Belial, the Amulet of Styx, Scroll of Escaro, Book of Ancients. I love that fire blade. That is super cool. Your combat hits do D8 damage, and if the target takes one or more wounds from a hit, they also gain a burning marker. Stone gauntlets, 
a Faustian jar, a fire whip, the ring of Orosia, the amulet of Cinder, armor of the fallen. Again, a really heavy armor set. Man, that's got to be like burning if you put that on with magma touching it. <laughs> I also like these robes. That is super cool. Plus three health and you are immune to burning markers. That's a really nice thematic element there. And there is another parasite, a fire parasite. Passing through a gout of flame, you feel a searing heat in your shoulder. A fire parasite has attached itself to you, feeding on your soul. You are plus two agility, plus one damage to your combat hits. Anytime you roll a six for move, take one corruption point, ignoring willpower. So this guy is going to uh, mutate you quite frequently if you keep rolling six for movement. Chains of Conquest. The Amulet of Cinder, Scroll of Darkness, a Shadow Sword, and Scroll of Darkness, and a Book of the Lost. So when we get into the threats, actually, let's look at the Lava Man real quick. So the Lava Man Mini, this is one of the ones that I did not like the way it turned out. And I actually blame the primer that I used. When I sprayed it on, I didn't notice, but it sprayed on with this really kind of like sandpaper texture. I'm not sure what it was. I'm not sure if it was too cold or what. And it just... It prevented a, a nice finish from the poly shade. The back came out okay, but I was not very happy with the way my Lava Men turned out. However, I don't like these enemies enough to pursue buying replacements that I could redo. So the Lava Men, they are constructs. They live in Cinder. They are large. They have Initiative 3. Their abilities are Burning Touch, Molten Body, and they are made from Lava. At the start of their activation, Lava Men heal one wound for every lava space adjacent to them. So that's cool. They do use their environment. I like that. As well as the space they are in. Uh, lava Men are immune to burning markers, of course. They do have a ranged attack, so they like, you know, hurl fireballs or magma pies at you or something. Uh, they hit on a range of four up. They hit on a melee of four up. They roll four combat dice. And they have, uh, they each hit does a damage of three. And so you will have um, Flaming Fists, Ambassadors of Hell, Heat Shimmer, Lava Explosions, and Lava Eruptions. So there's where they use their range. It's only in an elite attack. So at the start of their activation, roll a d6 for each Lava Man. On a roll of one or two, it will immediately make an extra ranged attack against a random hero within range before activating as normal with a range eight only one d6 but the damage 2d6 plus two that is nasty that is huge and they have a health of 10 and then there is the brutal side brutal side all right so when we get into the encounters this is where I was really disappointed with this expansion. Not, not the encounters, I'm sorry, the threats. So in the box, the only uh, threat cards you are going to have are these here. Lava Men, a standard threat from another world, from a normal world. Lava Men, Souls of the Damned, and Lava Bats. So like I said, out of the box, you're not going to be seeing very much enemy variety in this world. And it's pretty disappointing when you get it to the table because you don't have a lot of variety for the enemies. However, a lot of expansions added quite a bit to this expansion. So now this expansion is actually pretty cool. If you sink like another $80, I don't know how much money, $100 into worth of other expansions, you will be able to add stuff to this expansion. So you can encounter the flesh stalkers in this expansion. I really like these guys. Cool to see them here. Kind of makes sense. Tradaran Raiders, I'm not so sure why they are here. Um, kind of pseudo-Nazi guys, so maybe they were sent to hell for being bad. The Harvesters, of course, appear here because the Harvesters wear these suits of armor and they go out and harvest dark stone. And then, of course, you do have the Hellfire Succubi, which will appear here when you get your Hellfire Mission Pack. And these enemies are cool. They have a, a deck of magical hellfire spells that they will be casting. Uh, you can get these hellhounds, which they can appear here. Dark lava men are from the hellfire succubi expansion. Now, you can encounter 
the boss, Liao, in a regular mission without going to pursue him to fight. However, he is like a shade of himself. He is a weaker version of the boss. So that is super cool when you can just encounter that giant boss on a normal mission. I like that a lot. And then this was pretty cool. Some of the monsters from Forbidden Fortress show up here. So they have like this crossover. The Magma Fiends, the Soul Hunters, the Charred um, Onmarake, and the Scourge Dead. So really cool. Like I said, once you start getting other sets, this set itself becomes quite fun. And then you also have a number of encounters. And again, a lot of these encounters are actually from other sets. So um, these, let's see, one, I think there's 15 included, Rising Lava, Dripping Magma, Crumble Crust, Invisible Hellhounds, Treasures of Greed. The chamber is filled with golden trinkets and treasure from across space and time. As you reach out to pick one up, you can feel the darkness infecting your hand, cursing through your veins. Each hero may attempt to pick up treasure up to three times using the following test, a spirit six plus test. Chained spirit. Now, so that's all you get in the set. So you, again, you don't get very many encounters, but then these are gonna come from different expansions. So this is from the Belial expansion. I think there's one, two, three, four, five from the that expansion. This is the expansion that you can buy from the Flying Frogs uh, website. So this is the encounter expansion for, the, um, for this world. Something in the Steam, Ancient Text, Burning Souls, Cascade of Skulls, Lava Waterfalls, Dark Reflection, Flame Geysers, Feast of the Damned, Liquid Dark Stone, Stepping Stones, Flame Geysers again, Chains of Forever. Hanging from above, rusty chains extend down into the chamber, terminating in vicious barbed hooks that sway and chatter in the hot currents of air. As you enter the room, you feel as though the chains are somehow aware of your presence. Hellraiser. And ancient text. So again, it is an expansion that is expanded by other expansions, and when it is, it becomes quite good. But out of the box, I think it is a little disappointing. However, it is also on the cheaper side of the big boxed expansions. So, all right, guys. Well, that was a look at the Caverns of Center from Shadows of Brimstone. I hope you enjoyed that video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.